Hello, in this video I'm going to talk to you about some of the equipment that you are going to need to take with you on an expedition that isn't clothing. I've recorded a separate video about the, the clothes that you're likely to need to wear on an expedition and I'll put a link to that up here and a, a link at the end of the video as well. Okay, so the, the kit that you are likely to need, first of all, is a rucksack. Um, you'll need to take a pack with you that's big enough to carry all the gear that you will need for the duration of the expedition that you are doing. I will record another video about how to pack a rucksack. Again, link up here and at the end. Um, and there are lots of different brands of rucksack. Um, so I'll just show you some of the, the things to look for. Um, for an, an expedition, you are likely to need a rucksack with about a 65 litre capacity. We do have some rucksacks which we can lend you from school, especially if you are doing 10 tours. Um, but, um, and they are 65 litre rucksacks. With the rucksack, um, it's important, especially for an expedition, that it has a good hip belt. You'll be carrying most of the weight of the pack on your hips. You'll find it really helpful if there are pockets on the hip belt to store things which you need to get easy access to, such as snacks, sun cream, hand gel, etc. Many modern rucksacks um, have the ability to change the distance between the, the shoulders and the hips in order to fit the, you um, if you have different sizes. Um, if you need help with that, please do ask us and we can give you some advice about how to, to fit the rucksack. Having a rucksack with, with pockets um, in the bag and, and in the lid will also help you to um, organise your, your kit um, and to be able to access the stuff that you need um, when you need it. I strongly recommend um, having some dry bags. Um, dry bags will help to keep what's inside the rucksack waterproof. Um, because the, the rucksack itself will not be waterproof, especially when you open the lid. Um, having dry bags of different sizes, different colours, will help you to organise your gear. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about how I organise my gear um, in a video about packing the rucksack. Whilst you're on expedition, you will need to drink. Um, and some people have a, just a, a bottle with water or two bottles. Um, don't just get a, a, a plastic, a very cheap, flimsy, sort of Coca-Cola type um, bottle because that will un be unlikely to withstand any bashing around or um, encounter with sharp objects. Um, so this sort of size, uh, a one litre bottle, um, would be, be useful. Um, if you like hot drinks, then having a, an insulated cup, um, one with a, a lid would be helpful because then um, it, it avoids spillage and you can carry a, a, a hot drink with you whilst you walk. Many people use um, hydration bladders. Um, so this one is, is by uh, the brand Platypus and the, um, there are others, so Camelback um, as well as many outdoor brands um, do their own version of this. Um, it's helpful if the bladder has a, an opening at the top um, in order to help you to refill it um, without having to get the whole thing out. Um, this one is quite good because the, the hose comes unclipped very easily um, for installing it to the bag, but also for, for washing it and drying it as well. The mouthpiece will often have a, 
um, a clip on it um, in order to lock it so it doesn't drip when you're not drinking. Um, but do be careful when you have the, um, the, the mouthpiece on the rucksack that when you take the rucksack off, the mouthpiece doesn't end up in the, in the soil or worse. Many modern rucksacks have a sleeve um, against the back of against your back um, to store the um, the bladder, and there is a hole in the rucksack for the the hose to go through, um, just making life a lot easier. If you do have a bladder. It's, it's important that you're able to fill that during the day. Um, two litres should be a, enough to get you through a day, but if it's particularly hot, you may need to, to refill. And if you're wild camping, you'll need to refill it as well. So having a bottle like this to, to fill from either a tap if you're on a campsite or from a stream is really helpful. Um, a one litre bottle would enable you to have the right dose of water sterilisation tablets in order to, to purify that water before you drink it. So do consider carrying one of these in addition to um, the, the hydration bladder. A good idea to, to organise your food. I would ad, uh, advocate having a, a plastic bag for your food, have a separate bag for each day. Therefore, um, you don't start eating food for a future day. Um, and at the end of each day, the bag for that day could be used as your rubbish bag for the next day. Um, and that rubbish bag can then be disposed of in a bin. Um, or if you're fortunate, your assessor or supervisor might be willing to, to take that from you. Um, I haven't got a, a, a full day's food here, um, but on Gold and Gold DV and Ten Tools expeditions, boil in the bag food or dehydrated food um, is reasonably light, reasonably packable, um, convenient, um, and hassle free basically. Um, but on a a bronze or silver DV expedition, it's quite nice to cook a proper meal and, and have some of the social aspects of cooking. It's important that you have some sun cream and a little sachet of sun cream is, is, is a good idea, as well as some um, kind of lip um, protection as well. Um, even if it's not sunny, you may get burnt, um, so it's, it's handy to have some kind of sun protection. Antibacterial gel, um, once you've been to the toilet or before you eat, um, really good idea just to, um, uh, from a hygiene point of view. If it's um, summer and quite still in the air, um, especially if you're camping near water, you may find that you get quite a lot of midges around. Um, so some kind of insect repellent um, you could share this with um, with the rest of your group um, would be a, a really good idea to have with you. Now a couple of things which you should carry but hope not to use um, would be a, a first aid kit. So just a small first aid kit with some wound dressings, some antiseptic wipes, a uh, really good idea to have some blister plasters in, in here. Um, gloves, um, especially if you've got dirty hands, um, but blister plasters would be a useful thing to have, um, and just normal plasters as well. Do make sure that um, the dressings in your first aid kit um, are in date. Um, some um, tape as well is a, is a good thing to have. Hopefully you won't need to use it, but if you've got it, then you've got it. In your own personal first aid kit, it would be good to have your own medication, whether that's painkilling medication or for any other conditions that you might have. A whistle. Um, in an emergency, you can attract attention using the whistle. The international distress signal, six blasts on the, miss on the whistle, wait a minute followed by six blasts and carry on until help is with you. If you 
um, are responding to a group in distress, then the response is three blasts, wait a minute, three blasts, and keep doing that again until you are with the group. A tick card or tick removal tweezers, really important, um, especially in southwest England. Some ticks do carry Lyme disease, and so therefore it's important that you remove the tick safely and as soon as possible. So having a, a dedicated card with slots for, for very small ticks or for larger ticks, um, where you can just lift the tick off the skin um, is really beneficial and so do make sure that you have one of these in a first aid kit and again the first aid kit in its own dry bag. Other miscellaneous bits of um, gear that you might need um, so a head torch or any torch will do. A head torch is particularly helpful because um, it enables you to be hands-free um, whilst you're cooking or washing up or, or whatever. Um, so a head torch with spare batteries for the torch, really important or really helpful. Um, water purification tablets, these ones are chlorine dioxide which um, are very effective at killing microorganisms um, but also doesn't give as much of a taste to the water as chlorine tablets do. If you do use chlorine tablets and use neutralisation tablets just remember to add the neutralisation tablet after the chlorine tablet has sterilised the water. Um, some string um, which could be used for replacing boot laces um, or for running repairs to, to straps on rucksacks and things like that. Um, and a small pocket knife um, is, has, has all sorts of, of uses. If you carry a mobile phone and mobile phones are useful, um, you might want to carry a, a charger for that phone. Um, but I'd definitely recommend having some kind of waterproof um, bag for the phone. Um, these ones um, produced by Aquapack are, are very good. Um, do check it maybe with a tissue in it and put it into a sink full of water just to check it is waterproof before you trust your very expensive phone to it. Um, the plastic on this is touched touch screen compatible so you can use the functions of your phone and the clear plastic at the top enables you to be able to use the camera functions on your phone. There are rules for using phones on expeditions and these will be covered separately and for DOV expeditions both participants and parents must sign to abide by those rules. Useful to have towels, um, so these Trek towels, different sizes, um, this one's very small, could be used um, if you're not on a campsite where there are showers. Um, you could also use something like this as a tea towel um, for drying your, your cooking gear. From a hygiene point of view, a, a small wash bag is um, advised. Um, in the wash bag, um, some wet wipes and um, be really good for, for just giving yourself a wash and um, deodorant, a fold foldable toothbrush and a small pack of toothpaste. Um, little nappy bags are, are really helpful for disposing of sanitary items um, once they've been used or even for um, putting used toilet paper in um, to avoid burying that um, in the wild. Speaking of which, within your group it would be a good idea to carry a, um, a trowel, a, a plastic but sturdy trowel which could be used um, for burying waste if necessary. Again you only need one of these in the group and I strongly recommend keeping it in a plastic bag um, to keep the rest of your gear um, clean. So 
stove and um, so this is a, a, a two-person stove and um, the stoves we use are branded by um, the Swedish company Trangia um, these are excellent they contain everything you need um, for, for cooking um, so you'll need one of those and having some kind of cutlery um, a spork is helpful it has everything you need in, in one um, item um, you could use one of the, the pans from the Trangia as a bowl to eat out of if you're not eating out of a, a packet. Or you could bring your own bowl um, or plate separately if you wanted to. A survival bag, this is useful to have. Um, well, it's necessary to have at least a couple in your group for use in an emergency. I recommend you don't unfold it unless it's an emergency because you'll find it very difficult to squish it back down to, to this sort of size again. Having a pen um, useful for, for writing messages, um, writing notes, and things like that. So recommend carrying a pen with you. Um, spare pack of tissues and obviously matches um, for, um, for your cooking and um, make sure you remember those sorts of things. Maps, we will provide you with maps for your expeditions um, but it is useful to have a map case to keep the map um, contained, to keep it dry um, and to keep it attached to you. Recommend that you don't hang the, the lanyard round your neck but put it onto a, a clip which you can attach to a shoulder strap on your rucksack um, to stop it um, disappearing off but also to prevent it um, causing any kind of damage to your neck. Compass, another essential piece of equipment for, for navigation. We will train you in how to use a compass, um, useful for many more things than just finding direction. Um, at bronze DOV level, one or two compasses per group would be fine um, for DOV, gold DOV and 10 tours. Um, having a compass each is, is pretty much essential. A trekking pole could be a useful thing to have um, with the weight of the rucksack and um, it just helps to, to protect your knees um, especially when you're going up and downhill. Um, I've attached just a little length of, of duct tape to it so that I can use that for running repairs to um, waterproofs or to tents and things like that. Um, but if you are doing gold DOV or 10 tours, you'll find a walking pole really helpful for um, just probing the ground ahead of you to see how stable it is. And if you are crossing a river, um, it will be, give you a lot more support when you're doing that. In terms of sleeping gear, um, it's important you have some kind of insulation between you and the ground. So um, an old, um, sort of yoga style foam roll mat will provide that. They're not very comfortable, but it would at least insulate you. They're quite light, but they are quite bulky and it would be quite difficult to fit one of these inside your rucksack. Many people go for an inflatable roll mat. So this is um, by, this is branded as Thermarest. And um, these are much more comfortable they pack down a bit smaller so they're much more likely to fit inside your rucksack um, but they are a little bit heavier. These ones do provide insulation even if they're not inflated or if they're punctured and so you will be warmer with these than with just a, a single inflatable um, mattress. Problem with those is that if they get punctured um, you'll be very uncomfortable and there will be no insulation between you and the ground. So you could end up being uncomfortable and cold, which potentially could be very dangerous. Sleeping bags. Um, 
Sleeping bags are probably going to be the single largest item in your rucksack. Sleeping bags need to keep you warm. So a bag which will keep you warm in the middle of summer would not be appropriate at the end of March or beginning of April. Um, so just be aware of, of that. So depending on the time of year, you might need different quality of sleeping bag. We will provide advice on this, but for tentals and gold DOV, where we are camping in the early spring, um, it is important to find a bag which has a, a lower comfort limit temperature rating um, down to about minus two or a comfort limit of, of, of zero or below um, degree C is, is really important. Um, at zero degrees with a lower comfort limit, you will not be comfortable, but at least you will survive. Um, it's good to store sleeping bags um, in a, a larger, um, larger bag because then um, it allows the bag to, um, to expand um, and to maintain its insulating properties. Um, although having a compression sack to make the bag much smaller for transportation is really helpful. You may want to consider a, a very small light liner for your sleeping bag. Um, this can help to provide a bit of extra warmth, but also um, something small and light. Um, this is something which is much more easily washable than the sleeping bag. So um, if you sleep inside a liner, then it's much easier to, to keep that clean than um, having to wash um, the, the whole sleeping bag. And then finally, the tent. Um, so you'll need to carry the tent. This is a, a, a two-person tent. Um, school will provide you with tents, as will provide you with the stoves as well, and um, gas for the stoves. Um, do split the, the weight of the tent and the stove between the people in that tent. So if it's a three-person tent, you might want to have one person with the stove and gas, one person with the poles and pegs, and one person with the inner tent and fly sheet. Or perhaps one person with the fly sheet and pegs, one person with the inner tent and poles, and one person with the stove and gas. If it's a two-person setup, maybe one person with the stove, gas, poles and pegs, and one person with the fabric of the tent.